I hate pack wrapping though, so far. <laughs> <laughs> so far I'm not a pack wrapping fan. I think I also pack bad. I'm not, I think I'm really top heavy. It better really be totally cool. When I showed up for this trip, Hank hands me this uh, giant bag and it's like, oh, you gotta stuff this in your backpack. Turns out we're all gonna be carrying these pack rafts up into the mountains, which, um, you know, you usually are trying to lighten your load as much as possible. Okay, ready? Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, God. Oh, this is horrible. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hank has brought these pack rafts with him, and they're absolutely huge. Pretty sure it's heavy. They're the, the size of, like, a very tall baby. Two trailhead. And they're, I mean, they're, they're, five, they're five to six pounds, so, which is, isn't nothing when you're talking about putting it on your back. We're at the Fernandez Trailhead. We're gonna hike north, and then we're gonna hike west toward all these lights here. I had this idea that I wanted to go hiking in Ansel Adams Wilderness, because I've been there before, and I think it's beautiful. And there's all these amazing lakes in the high Sierras up there. Today we could hike all the way out to Chittenden Lake, then come back, come to Lillian Lake the next day, uh, and do and go out to Rainbow Lake. And I thought, wow, I bet no one's ever paddled those lakes because it's almost impossible to get a kayak or a boat up there. And then it occurred to me, this would be an amazing pack rafting trip. Why is my bag so full? Well, we're all bringing pack rafts on this trip. I have this dream that we're going to paddle in lakes that almost no one has probably ever paddled in before because they're remote lakes in the high sea. Pack rafts are small five pound rafts that fit into a backpack that you can take anywhere to remote locations, pull them out, inflate them, put them in water, and then raft around. How far is that? That's a good question. So the plan is to hike an unknown number of miles. <laughs> I can't imagine a better way to spend a three-day weekend than to head out with two of my best friends into Ansel Adams Wilderness. Would you say this is the least research trip you've ever done? <laughs> Hank and I met in high school. We were best friends junior and senior year and then went off to college and you know professional lives and we managed to stay in touch. I've been on like 5% or less of your trips and I can still pretty safely say that this is not the least research. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if we knew everything, it would be boring. Rich is a, uh, a close friend of Hank's. Wow, where the hell are we? and they have done a, a number of adventures, hiking trips together as well. I'm just looking for excitement and adventure and maybe fortune. Well, we're at the first of many lakes that we're supposed to see this weekend. I bet it's a beautiful lake at certain times of year, but we're here now. I was imagining a beautiful blue crystal, just like glassy abyss of beauty. And instead, it's just an abyss. You took us on a little uh, side track, which uh, you, you pointed to your map and you said it was going to be a little dog leg off the trail. And, uh, and the, when we say when we say map, we're not talking about like a like a full color like topographical map. Like you point at a, at a xeroxed piece of paper from the '80s. This is a really really whiny group of people. But I thought you wanted adventure. <laughs> yeah, we wanted we wanted adventure. I don't, does this constitute as adventure? So this is Van this is the real Vandenberg, huh? The real Vandenberg. I mean, Vandenberg Pond that we just had lunch at, that was pretty sweet as well. It turns out that that uh, mud pit I guided us to wasn't Vandenberg Lake at all. This place has a little more going for it in terms of like scope and water. <laughs> Overall beauty. Yeah. yeah. We uh, halfway into day one, and I've already developed blisters on the back sides of both my ankles. So now we're going to try to do a major blister repair and uh, see if I can finish the, the day's hike. I feel like the way that we're repairing your feet is applying the same knowledge that I'd use to repair like an old inner tube. Hmm. Some people have compared me to an old inner tube. It's 
kind of like taking it. If we look on our map here, we got to Stanford Lakes, due west to Chittenden Lake. Looks like the trail heads kind of west northwest, which means we definitely want to be going up that direction. The hike up to Chittenden is a little bit of a more of an elevation climb than I think we were expecting. It really opens up from forest to having to climb on these huge, uh, just like slates of rock that are all slanting up, and you know it's just kind of a a trudge getting up there. Maybe we made a wrong turn. It's also harder to follow this trail because all the trail is just marked with is rocks, but all that's around you is rocks everywhere you look, so everything kind of looks the same. You think the lake's right over there? It's somewhere. Yeah. I think it might be around. Uh -huh. Makes sense. So we just kind of descend that way and around the ridge. And... Okay, let's try. Okay. Cool. Good work, everyone. We live to hike another day. We're going to die out here. We had to traverse across this rocky trail, and it wasn't clear where the trail was. So we're just like really climbing up and gaining serious elevation quickly, and we think we're going the right direction. But these are like serious climbs. It's slightly dangerous, especially when you have a heavy bag on your back. Onward to the lake. We're ending up scrambling up this boulder wall just hoping that this is going to take us to where we need to go. It's a little rough, but actually it's kind of fun. Um, sometimes when you're, you know, going backcountry hiking, it's nice to get off the trail a little bit and just kind of blaze your own path. Oh God. Oh wow. man, this is... Oh, that was a tough, uh, tough climb there at the end. And we did get a little bit lost, but uh, it's definitely worth it. Check out that view. So great. When we get to Chittenden and walk out in front of that lake, it is so worth it. Yeah, I mean, I know it was, I know it was super painful, but, but it's really nice here. As we set up our camp and eat dinner, it's just so beautiful and so peaceful and so relaxing. It's just great. When we wake up in the morning at Chittenden Lake, this is our first chance to do some pack rafting. It feels Might lighter material than I was expecting. I think I've been hearing about pack rafts for years, and I've never really known what to expect out of them. I always kind of had in my mind that image of the inflatable life raft from uh, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Grab on, shorty! Grab on! pull a rip cord and suddenly like this package just becomes a raft. So uh, I was really excited about the prospect of doing that. Yeah, these are totally cool. I'm waiting to see how they perform, but like I already, that's already want one. That's why I'm like crazy about them. This is one of the most beautiful areas of wilderness in the world. And to be able to take rafts out with paddles that you've hiked up to 10,000 feet and just enjoy the scenery, it's a real privilege. Uh, this is pretty cool. They're, uh, they're pretty good, they move. We quickly managed to get these pack rafts set up and it's actually a really peaceful feeling to get on the water and not only sort of feel that isolation from the rest of society, but also feel like we're sort of able to get out onto these waters that almost no one else has ever been on before. Yeah. They handle pretty well. I'd like to see how they handle in the rapids. Let's cut through this slot feature here. This water is perfectly still. There's not even any wind. They just glide though. All right, it's worth it to bring the rafts. <laughs> what an amazing spot. 
it really does feel like we're exploring and like we're getting to see something that we only have access to because of the extra work that we put into getting these rafts up here. And that's sort of special. It's nice when you put in the work and you get that kind of reward. It's just such a peaceful experience to be paddling on this flat water and it truly is one of the most beautiful lakes in the Sierras. Yeah, it's fun. A little heavy on the way up, but uh, I think it was worth it. Go check it out. We are the only people that we see on that lake. It's as quiet as I could ever imagine quiet being. But we can't spend all day on just one lake. There's a lot of lakes in the high Sierras. So we pack up those rafts, stick them into our bags, and head straight back down the mountain. Feeling pretty good. Not too sore from yesterday. Feel like we got a good workout. We're off to Rainbow Lake. These boots are uh, rubbing in the same spot on both sides. So what I decided to do was just cut out that area of the boot that's chafing. I'm hoping that I'll still have enough structure and integrity of the boot to protect my feet and uh, make it through the day today. We made it to Lillian Lake and our main plan was to eat lunch here and then continue on to Rainbow Lake. But Rich suggested that this lake is the biggest and uh, it would be really cool to paddle out into the middle of it. So I think I might go swimming, like off the boat. Okay. So we're doing a quick emergency raft setup. We're gonna do a 45 minute raft around this lake, pack the rafts back up and still go to Rainbow Lake for the cool remote side trip. Rich was like, hey, you know what I wanna do? He's like, I wanna go paddle in the middle of that lake, Lake Lillian. And uh, we're like, you know what? That's what we got rafts for. Welcome battle. How is it? I'm a little jealous as Jake is actually going for a swim. Um, the water just looks too cold for me to get in there, but it looks like he's having a good time at least for a few seconds. Hank, are you getting in? I don't think so. It looks cold. Pack these up and then get back on with our hike. So we pack up from Lake Lillian, and the next step is to try uh, another way of getting to a really high lake um, without actually following the trail. We're gonna take a little bit of a shortcut. We've decided to uh, go totally off trail because we can cut some distance off the hike on this side trip uh, if we just go cross country here. So we're just gonna go up this gnarly saddle here and then see where that gets us. If I'm wrong, uh, we might just end up with more high mountain ridge in front of us and be screwed, but hopefully I'm right. And so it's another like rocky climb up over this saddle on a ridge. All right, so uh, what are we doing? Well, the, we, we're still, we're going to want to keep it in that direction. So whatever we need to do is fine, but in the end, we're going to do And it's a serious hike. Like everyone's is huffing and puffing pretty, pretty hard. It's a lot of hard work. It's definitely not easy. Yeah, that way, yeah. So yeah, bear to your right a bit. So to avoid crossing this other top of the line to our left, okay. we're just gonna go this way, keep going, and then we're gonna veer around and then we'll see the light shortly, I would think. got here to Rainbow Lake and we found our camp spot and we think we're what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our pack rafts. We got the idea to maybe go for a little sunset paddle before we set up camp. I actually think that Rainbow Lake was really worth saving for the end. Rainbow Lake has just like a lot of different looks and 
levels and texture to it. Like it seems like the kind of place that you could actually settle in for a few days here and keep exploring it and keep finding something new. But we only get one night here, and so we're gonna make the most of it. Oh, this is really nice. I feel like this is kind of the best of the lakes. Yeah, it is just beautiful. I think one of my favorite parts of a trip like this is to have time to catch up with, with friends and with Hank. I also got to talk a lot with Rich and get to know him, and that's always amazing when you have a really close friend and you get to meet their other close friend, and uh, you hope that it's gonna work and that you guys will like each other, and I think uh, it, it did work. I think that like most people, I feel like I spend too much time focusing on on working and what's just happening day to day in terms of keeping my life together. And it really is nice to get on the trail and to meet new people and, and have these experiences. I'm really glad that I got to meet Jake, and it's great to just be away from your own life or what you think of your own life for just a little while and sort of, you know, get in touch with yourself again. There's just nothing better than getting old friends and new friends together and just spending some time without the pressures of the world to just relax and go on some amazingly beautiful outdoor adventures.